five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Let's go, Soccer, for number 10. Pitching down Stage range. one chamber pressure is nominal. All right, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying yet again another stack of 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. Just moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure occurs right after we go supersonic. After this point, we're then able to Falcon throttle the engines back supersonic. up. That call is just about 10 seconds away. Max Q. We've successfully crossed the max Q threshold. We're throttling our Merlin engines back up. As, we're, as the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner, the stresses on the vehicle continue to diminish. And we're just about a minute away from three major events happening one after another. Main engine cutoff, known as MECO, stage separation, and second engine start one. To explain the first one, MECO, this is where all nine M1D engines shut off and they slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage step. And that's where, once again, the first stage and separate, second stage separate. Stage one makes its way back down to sea level for landing, and stage two continues its primary mission, along with the fact that the MVAC engine lights up and propels that second stage, along Falcon with the Starlink satellite is following story. a nominal trajectory. We're 30 seconds away from those events. Falcon 9 continues to be on nominal trajectory. Our MVAC engine is starting to chill to prepare for that second engine start just about 20 seconds from now. And shortly after these three events, our fairing will deploy and expose the Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. All good news so far. The nine Merlin engines have shut down. Our first and second stages are heading their separate ways. And our MVAC engine has begun burning and will continue to do so for about the next six minutes. Bearing separation confirmed. We have confirmation, and you can see it there. The two fairing halves have jettisoned and are heading back down. As a reminder, this is the second flight for these fairing halves, and we'll be attempting to recover them once again via a wet recovery from the contracted recovery vessel, Sheila Bordelon. Everything is nominal so far. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. We're just about four minutes after liftoff. For those of you just joining us, we have a lot going on. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see our second stage and its MVAC engine is burning, carrying 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. And on the other hand, we have our first stage uh, beginning its 10th recovery attempt. Um, as stage two continues to burn, as you see here, stage one is actually gonna execute two separate burns signal, in order to make its way back to Earth. The first of which is the entry burn, just a little more than two minutes from now, three of those M1D engines will reignite. This helps slows the, the first stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere and reduces the loads on the vehicle. After that burn, uh, starts, ends, and is confirmed successful. We get ready for our final burn, the landing burn. It's a single center engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship safely.
And as a reminder, we can't stress it enough, tonight marks the 10th flight for this particular first stage. This is a record for our Falcon 9 rocket's life cycle. This particular booster first debuted on our Crew Demo 1 mission just over a year ago. Now, reusability is critical to what we do at SpaceX. This fact that we can reuse our first stages, it allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the ultimate cost to space access. And although this is the 10th time for this rocket, we first reused the normal orbital class rocket on the SES-10 mission back in March of 2017. It just goes to show how far we've come since then. We're about a minute away from that entry burn beginning. That burn should last for about 20 seconds. Now we're about 30 seconds away from that first stage empty burn igniting. The center engine will ignite at first. Two more engines will ignite shortly after that. The Merlins on this first stage are optimized to operate at sea level, and they achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust apiece during ascent and descent. Just a few seconds away. TS has saved. A few seconds away from the entry burn. Stage one, entry burn startup. And you can see that plume is starting to expand as the other two engines spot begin to fire. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there you go, the entry burn has successfully ended. And now we're just a little more than a minute and a half away from the Both final burn. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Now, for those of you who follow along with SpaceX, you know that the soot I see on a rocket indicates it's been flown before. Um, here's an explanation of how that soot forms and why that first stage is so dirty in this case. Uh, the rocket grade kerosene, RP-1, uh, that, Falcon's, that powers Falcon 9 is carbon-based. And when you burn it, it creates soot. Uh, now, as we approach the landing site, like you saw just now, that long entry burn slows the vehicle down. And since we come in engines first, the booster flies through its own plume and exhaust, Stage which deposits soot on the rocket. And now if you watch the feed, like you saw just there, you saw that soot starting to fly up and stick to the lens. And we're only about 20 seconds away from that landing burn starting. And also during that time, our four landing legs will deploy um, while that single engine is firing to help us safely land on just read the instructions. Stage one, landing burn startup. You see it there, our landing burn's begun. Hopefully we get Stage continuous coverage. Terminal guidance. And also our second engine will cut off shortly after this landing attempt. Stage one, landing leg deploy. We have continuous views right there. This looked great. Stage two FTS is saved. And Stage there you have confirmed. it. We have a confirmation of a successful 10th landing of this booster and the 83rd overall successful recovery of the Falcon 9 first stage. Very exciting. This booster gets to live again. In terms of the second stage, we're waiting for that second engine to cut off. That second engine has Nominal cut off. Orbit insertion. And we have confirmation from the GNC team that we are now in a good parking orbit. Second stage is now going to coast in this orbit for the next 35 minutes or so. We'll leave you with two things. We're going to leave you with this animation showing you where you're at in this coast phase, along with some groovy space tunes. We'll see you back here around T plus 44 minutes for that second engine start to phase. Welcome back to the live webcast of SpaceX's 27th Starlink mission. We'll catch you up to speed. We had an on-time liftoff at 2.42 a.m. Eastern Time, and tonight's first stage had a record-breaking successful 10th flight and successful 10th recovery. 
In terms of our second stage, everything is still looking good. We're on a nominal trajectory and we're getting ready for the SES2 event in a few seconds. It'll be very short compared to SES1 in comparison, just one second long of our MBAC engine. And after that, we'll go back into a coast phase, but uh, coasting's putting it lightly. The vehicle's currently traveling at about 7.7 .7 kilometers per second. That's over 17,000 miles per hour, a very fast journey for our 60 Starlink satellites. We may not have video of this event coming up, but currently the vehicle's over the Indian Ocean, and we're gonna wait for those call outs uh, just a few seconds from now. And then once this event is confirmed as being good, we'll wait to see if we have a good orbit before we continue our second coast phase before payload deploy. We're still waiting for confirmation of the second engine start and second engine cutoff, as well as confirmation of good orbit. But regardless, we are going into another coast phase. This one will be a little shorter. Um, during this time, not only are we going to coast to the correct deployment point along the Earth, we're also going to spin the spacecraft along its central axis. This gives the Starlink satellites the natural momentum they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. We'll check back in with you at about T plus one hour and three minutes. Good morning and welcome back once again to our broadcast for our 27th Starlink mission. Uh, one small note, shortly after we entered our current coast phase, we confirmed that our second engine start and shutoff was successful. We're currently in a good orbit awaiting payload deploy. Uh, but if you're just joining us, we'll quickly, quickly recap today's mission, starting off with a successful liftoff from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 2.42 a.m. Eastern Time. We then had successful stage separation. We recovered our first stage for the 10th time on our drone ship, and we had two successful second stage MBAC engine startups. Right now, we're coming up on deployment of our stack of 60 Starlink satellites. It's just about 30 seconds away while our second stage is in between Australia and New Zealand. And you see it right there, actually. Those satellites are starting to slowly extend. Um, and shortly after this, they're going to deploy their individual solar arrays. And over the next few days and weeks, they're gonna distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their specific operational orbits. And, and with that, that will bring our webcast to a close for today. We wanna to thank the range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And thank you to you, all of our viewers, as well to all of our Starlink customers using our beta service at this time. If you're insertion. interested in being part of our beta program, please head over to starlink.com and sign up. I hope you enjoyed the webcast tonight and a special thanks to all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day.